So a while ago, I made a video about a very cool instrument from Albania called the Chiftli. I received a ton of comments on that video from people all over the world, many of which said something like, in my country, that instrument is called X. But every time, X was different. There was the Turkish Baglama, the Uzbek Dutar, the Persian Setar, the list went on and on. It seems like every country, from Turkey all the way through to China, had some version of this instrument. Naturally, my first instinct was to try to buy one of them and make a video about it. What I ended up getting is this, a Domra from Ukraine. I know nothing about this instrument. I really just bought it because I liked the way it looked. According to the internet, it gets tuned just like a mandolin. I'm gonna replace the strings, but before I do, let's just try it out the way it is. So it sounds kind of cool, but it's basically unplayable. If you look at it from the side, you can see how far the strings are from the fretboard. I basically can't press the string all the way down to hit the fret. That can't be normal. All told, the instrument is in pretty rough shape. I think at some point the neck fell off because you can see that it's been re-glued. And it probably just got reattached in the wrong position. To get around this, I'm gonna just grab a piece of wood and fashion a makeshift bridge that will allow the strings to sit much lower. Here's the original bridge, and here's the one I made. In order to figure out the correct position for our bridge, we compare the open string with the sound at the 12th fret. The 12th fret should be exactly one octave up from the open string. Now also seems like a good time to replace the strings. Okay, let's try it out again. Okay, that is much, much easier to play. Not only that, I'm really liking the sound so far. Now that I've got basically a working instrument, it's time to do some research. But first, let's hear what it sounds like when it's played by somebody who actually knows what they're doing. This is a Katarina Skliar, a superb performer who plays both Domra and mandolin. You may notice that the instrument she's playing has only three strings, not four. We'll get to that in a second. So it seems the Domra is a very old instrument. Exactly how old depends on how you think about it. The first written mention of it that used the exact word Domra was in the 16th century. It was a favorite instrument of Russian folk performers called Skomoroks. They were kind of like these outlaw jester types who would put on these performances that were very critical of the ruling powers. In 1648, Tsar Alexis of Russia outlawed these performers and ordered all of their instruments be destroyed. Over the course of the next few centuries, the instrument fell into disuse, and it was functionally replaced by the balalaika, which has a triangular body. But there was a resurgence. In the 1880s, this guy, Vasily Andreev, revived both the balalaika and the domra. Part of his goal was to take these folk instruments that had been seen as unfit for serious music and to boost their prestige so that they could be taught to the upper classes. At the time, there were these Italian mandolin orchestras that were super popular, and Andreev started basically the same thing, but with Russian folk instruments. By the way, this idea of the Russian folk orchestra continued throughout the 20th century, and there's still many of them around the world today. Anyway, in order to make his dream a reality, Andreev basically reinvented the Domra completely, and almost all the instruments today are based on his spec, and it's completely unclear how close his domra was to the one that was actually played in the 1600s. In Kazakhstan, there's an instrument called the dombra, and the original domra may have been more similar to that. The Kazakh dombra is one of the many relatives of the Turkish tambur, which traces its lineage all the way back to the ancient world. There are even ancient Egyptian paintings of women playing very similar instruments. In any case, Andreev's original design from 1896 had only three strings. In 1908, this four-string version was created so that the Domra could play mandolin and violin music. And it's worth mentioning that the version I have is basically a mandolin, but instead of having two courses of strings for every note, it has one. As a funny side note, in 1956, Fender Guitar introduced its electric mandolin that also had only one course for each note and tuned to the same four notes. I wonder if they knew that they were basically making an electric domra. Anyway, as you can see, some of the higher-end domras are quite beautiful. Mine is a fairly basic one made in a factory in Odessa. There's a photo of the actual factory. As you can see, the domras came in larger sizes too. 
So anyway, I have sampled my instrument, and this is what the sample library looks like so far. I haven't added any controls to it yet. I recorded the instrument with both a microphone and with a pickup, and then I combined the two signals to produce a richer sound. This is the pickup I used. It's a violin pickup, which I then slid underneath the makeshift bridge I had made. While I have the pickup attached, I thought it'd be fun to try the Domra out with some effects. This is Dispatch Master, a guitar pedal my wife got for me. It's basically a combined delay and reverb. the sound of the domra with the delay. I really want to make this sound part of the library that I release. Of course, Decent Sampler does have a built-in delay effect. Here's a preset that makes use of it. But it's missing what, for me, is a very important feature. Here, let me show you. This is Echo Boy by Sound Toys. It's a very popular delay plugin. Like Decent Sampler, it lets you set your delay time in seconds. But if you're working within a song, you can also set the delay time using musical note lengths, and it synchronizes the delay to the tempo of your song. This is what I wish we had in Decent Sampler. Of course, as the creator of Decent Sampler, if something's missing from the software, I've got nobody to blame but myself. In fact, I'm going to try to fix this right now. Okay, a few days have passed. Adding that functionality took a bit longer than expected, but the work is done. There's a new version of Decent Sampler, and here's what the updated sample library looks like. As you can see, there are a bunch of delay controls now, and most importantly, you can actually set the delay time using musical note lengths. I'll stick with eighth notes. I'm going to try to recreate the same scale that I was playing on the actual instrument when I was using the delay pedal. Now if I speed the tempo up, the delay should speed up too. Now let's add some bass guitar. Let's add another rhythmic element. I'm really happy with this sample library. Not only do I really like the sound of the Domra, but the delay feature that I ended up adding to Decent Sampler is something that I've wanted to have for years. It's funny, part of what I do is music and part of what I do is programming. Because of that, I'm always thrilled when I come across a physical instrument that somehow results in my writing code. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, if you haven't already, you may want to consider subscribing. It's free, and if you ding the bell, you'll be notified whenever I make one of these videos. The Domra sample library I made is free. There's a link in the description to this video. Make sure you update to the latest version of Decent Sampler so you can take advantage of that cool tempo synced delay. Also, there's a special alternate version for patrons that features me playing the Domra like a violin. I think it sounds really cool. The Patreon costs just $5, and each month you get an exclusive sample library just for patrons. There have been a ton so far. Okay, I think that's it. Have fun!